Hey there, Joseph Freeman here. Uh, my guest here today is Matt McHenry. Uh, he was the local band director at uh, Hickson High School, but now he's at uh, McMen County High School. That's right. Is that right? Sweet. And uh, now you are also the East Tennessee State Band and Orchestra Association Jazz Chair. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. ETSBOA for short. But um, anyways, thanks for coming on. Hey, uh, it's my pleasure. Yeah, thank you. So um, let's get started. How are you doing? Okay, uh, pretty good. It's been a busy summer, you know, changing jobs and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was just up there today working with the kids. So oh, I mean, tomorrow, Mc mm -hmm. yeah, we got camp, our first week of camp this week. So tomorrow is our first day with everybody. So there's oh, actually sweet. kids I haven't even met yet. So you guys are about to have like the real band camp coming up soon? Uh, we did two days of just new people, just getting up to speed. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then all next week is going to be our camp. All right, so you guys are getting like deep in it already. Wow. Yeah, we're right up knee deep in everything. I guess August is coming up. School's about to start. That makes yeah. sense. I mean, I was in band. I should know this too. <laughs> yeah, you of all people should know that, right? <laughs> anyway, yeah, for those who don't know, I also uh, went to Hickson High School. I'm a Hickson alum, and yeah, I was in the band program with uh, Mr. McHenry, as I called him, you know, for four years. It's One of now, many though. great Hickson alums out there. That's right. Shout out to my brother, Danny Freeman. Right. <laughs> anyways, anyways, so... Let's get to know you a little bit better. Uh, when did you start playing music? Um, well, mom and dad were all always into pretty good music. Mom was a classically trained soprano, sang at the church and everything. It's wow. that kind of story. So I always loved music, but I started playing trumpet when I was 11 mm -hmm. uh, in the sixth grade in the band. Uh, and we, we had just moved. So that was kind of my deal because I didn't, I didn't have scouts or anything. So, you know, I just got in band that year. Mm -hmm. uh, and I loved it. I just really enjoyed it, kind of had an aptitude for it. So, yeah. um, you know, I did a bunch of different stuff, but that's the one that, that stuck, I guess. Yeah, cool. That's awesome. I mean, hopefully we can get more kids, you know, that kind of opportunity to where they just pick up an instrument and they just love it. But I think some kids, it takes a little bit more push, you know. I was lucky because I had the sport at home, of course. Mm -hmm. You know all about that because um, you got a real supportive family. Definitely. Um, yeah. And, you know, like mom and dad were all about, like, hey, let's, you know, let you get involved in stuff. I did, they bought me a new trumpet when I was in the ninth grade, and they said, look, <laughs> you better stick with this. <laughs> and I like to remind them of that mm -hmm. even now. I was like, look, I've been doing this for 30 years now, so I, I still think you've stuck gotten, with it. <laughs> I think you got your money's worth out of the box for head. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess they, they bought you kind of a cheaper horn at the beginning, or? Oh, we rented, yeah, from the music okay. store, just like you do. It's the exact same story. It's, <laughs> it's the same everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So for you parents out there watching, get your kids to play, you know. It's, it's worth the investment, sometimes. It is. <laughs> sometimes, it very much is. Sometimes they may drop off, but if you, I guess, support them and, you know, provide that environment for your kids, I think um, a lot more kids can play music, honestly. Yeah, not everybody is a music is a musician, but there's a lot more people I think that are that don't think they are. Yeah, I mean, and I think my personal philosophy is that um, you know, anyone can play music, but you don't have to be good at music to enjoy it. I guess. I mean, you can pick up a guitar, play a few chords, and someone may be like, "He's not very good," but I mean, if you're enjoying it, I think that's all that really matters. Well, I think that's one of the sad things about today is it's such you know, there's such great music everywhere that people assume that if they're not a professional level, then why bother? You know, yeah. because you can see, you know, 12 year old kids on YouTube just shredding and whatever. I know, and it puts me to shame every time. I see. Uh, me too, exactly. You know? And, uh, but I, I feel like there's a whole dimension of just like, let's just play music because it's fun. You know, mm -hmm. if you can learn three chords on a ukulele, then good, you can make music now. I know. Um, and I, th I think that's the world would be a better place if more people had access to that kind of stuff. Definitely. Definitely. All right, let's see here. So what made you decide to pursue a career in music education? Um, well, let's see, let's think about this. Uh, <laughs> so in high school, and, and I was lucky because I know a lot of people that it took a while to kind of get their direction, you know, after yeah. high school. But uh, when I was a senior in high school, I had to make some decisions about the classes I was gonna take. And I decided I really loved music. I, there was no way I was gonna get, you know, give that up. Mm -hmm. um, and the more, again, I was really fortunate as a kid, I got to do all kinds of stuff that not everybody gets. So I took, we had jazz band, we had marching band, we had concert band, we had, uh, you know, I played in the church orchestra. Mm -hmm. I got to play Handel's Messiah. My, I took private lessons and my teacher was playing first trumpet and I was playing second trumpet. Wow. Uh, wow. In the Messiah, which is way easier than the first part. Um, <laughs> but I did that in high school. I, uh, gosh, what else? Um, 
we took music, we had music theory. I was mm -hmm. able to do that. So I just had all the uh, youth symphony. I had all these really cool experiences, and I found that every new part of the music business I got involved in, I just wanted to know more. You know, so we were, uh, you know, we were marching the drill in high school, and I was like, I wonder if I could write that, or you know, we're I'm sitting there in a band, like I wonder if I could conduct this piece. And so you know, there's just there's never been an end to, you know, just just the appeal of music. Like, mm -hmm. I like every little thing, and I, that's really the only thing in my life that I've found that's like that, that I can just still, after so many years, I can get into like that. Yeah. Awesome. So, you know, if, if I can do that for a living and actually maybe mm -hmm. do a little bit of good, I mean, why not? Sign me up. Exactly. No, that's, I think that's a great, a great reason. Definitely. So how long have you been teaching now? Uh, let's see. Well, 20 years, although this is my, eight, this will be my, wait for it, 19th year as a public school teacher, uh, I took two years out and I went back in, to grad school and got my master's degree. Mm -hmm. um, so I was still involved in the game. So I actually started teaching exactly 20 years ago, 2001. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it's been a minute. <laughs> so uh, where have you taught us so far? Uh, let's see. Well, I went to MTSU and right out of college uh, in 2001, I started teaching in Fayetteville, Tennessee, in mm -hmm. Lincoln County. I wasn't at the high school, but I, I taught at a couple of different uh, like junior highs. I taught band. Mm -hmm. uh, taught a little bit of elementary school music, which was a whole other experience. Oh, wow. Um, and it just kind of came with the gig. And mm -hmm. so then after a couple of years there, I decided that I wanted to focus on one or the other. And I was really kind of thinking about going into general music just because it was fun. And, you know, like you could just, you're learning new stuff every day. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I went back to grad school, took a few classes in each, and decided I really wanted to go the band track. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how I ended up at Hickson. So in 2005, I started at Hickson, uh, and then I've been there ever since, up until this year. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I remember. It was fun. Hickson was very fun. Yeah, we had three good times. <laughs> so what do you think has changed, if, if anything? What do you think has changed about yourself over the course of your teaching career, if anything? About me? Sure, yeah. Uh, oh, okay, cool. Um, I would say... And this is why I feel like I'm just in the right business is because the reasoning that I really thought I wanted to be a band director because of, uh, I, I still want to be a band director just as much as I ever did, but for like totally different reasons. So I've discovered like it kind of, there's different things about the profession that are like, okay, now this is, this is the real stuff. Cause I, you know, I originally thought, you know, I, I could see myself like on TV accepting the big trophy and you know like running the whole giant program yeah, and now right. it's really more about just like let's get out and do it you know mm -hmm. so less about the the pageantry and more about just like you know hanging out playing music you know mm -hmm. like enjoying it and get more people involved wow no I think it's a really great thing I think um, yeah I think I, I kind of felt the same way too kind of um, thinking of you know, being a band director, what it's going to be like, and I'm just thinking competitions and winning and, you know, trying to make the best band possible, I guess. But, yeah, I, I can see that where... Yeah, well, you know, you spend hours, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours each year you mm -hmm. know, developing the band that year, yeah. and then you spend, you know, like 45 minutes at an award ceremony. You know, so, a, yeah, what is it really times. about, you know? Yeah, exactly. So it's like, it's really about the, God, it's like really cliche to say, but it's about the journey, you know? <laughs> Not the destination. I mean, that's why they say that. Yeah. Um, I'd be interested to know about your journey, though, going, you know, going through the music school and everything like that. Well, my journey, I mean, that started with Mr. Rose over at Hickson Middle School, learning tuba, and I just chose tuba Shout because... Shout out to Hans Rose. Shout out to Hans Rose. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Love that guy. But, um, I mean, I only picked tuba because my sister played tuba. And, I don't know, I just picked it because of that. And I can't remember. I got grounded in middle school for some reason, probably not, you know, not having good grades or something. And um, so I had, no, had nothing else to do but practice my horn. So I just I got really good at tuba really fast. And then I picked up a guitar because I just like rock music. And I played Guitar Hero. And so I learned guitar really early. And then... I guess I just kept practicing, kept practicing, and kind of got good at a young age and realized like I was getting better than the other people around me. Not, I'm not trying to like <laughs> just talk about myself here and you know blow myself up, but um, yeah, I just kind of noticed I was getting better than you know the people around me, and I guess that gave me 
the passion, uh, you know, to keep pursuing music because it was like, I'm really good at this. I should keep doing this. And, um, it, but it wasn't until later in high school when, you know, I got better and better. I took music theory from, you know, your AP music theory class and I learned theory from that. And after that, I was able to apply it and start kind of learning improv a little bit. But it really wasn't until I was playing music in like a rock band with my friends that I like really got the passion for like playing music. So for you, it's about the creativity, the, yeah, the, the spontaneous. It's like, really just the, the experience of playing music with other people, um, even in like a concert band or something too. Um, it's just the experience of playing with other people and creating that music in the moment, feeling it, and then also knowing that, I mean, if it's a, if it's a good enough band that you're communicating you like communicating that emotion, the emotion of the music to other people in the audience. I, I guess I judge my own music by whether or not I can convey what I'm feeling to other people. Yeah, there's nothing like it, is there? It, it's another language. It's, it really is. And, and so being able to do that, and it's giving me goosebumps right now just thinking about it. <laughs> but because um, I just, I mean, I love doing it, but um, being able to play something, feel it, and then get other people to feel that too with me in the moment, it's just. That's what drives me now, and I discovered that in high school, and I mean, um, partly only because you know I had like your music theory class, and I was able to learn how to play in an ensemble, and you know, in in marching band and in concert band. Um, so having those opportunities really helped me find my passion. One thing that I thought was really cool that you did was you did that marching band arrangement <laughs> that we ended up playing like a thousand times, and it was good. Yeah. I was like, oh, was it a, this, you kind of got it. A, it was a Macklemore. First shop, yeah. Yeah. Shop. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was a good arrangement. Well, I was like a junior in high school. I'd just taken the music theory, and I was able to, if I could play it on my guitar, I could write it out. And so if I could hear it and then play it on my guitar, I could just write it out for any instrument. And I was able to do that with that song. And, um, that was so cool. I remember the, uh, it's like News Channel 9 or something. Yeah, we were Band of the Week. It was Channel 3. <laughs> Channel 3, yeah. They, uh, they did a piece on us. That was really cool. Ah, oh, man, I remember that. Good times, good times. Right? All right, uh, enough about me, though. Enough about me. This is your interview here. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so what changes have you, or what do you think needs to be changed, if anything, about the way schools treat Arts education, fine arts education. Oh, you're gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> you can um, be real here. If I mean, right? Don't no, say no, no. anything we're you don't the, want to say. You know, we're, we're in the circle of trust. Yeah. Um, no, I think uh, there needs to be a lot more emphasis. Of course, I would say that mm -hmm. on the arts, um, and I'll I mean, tell you why. Yeah, band director bias here, but right, sure. I mean, this is everybody's got a, an opinion. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I think the things that you get from playing music, especially in an ensemble, especially in a group, mm -hmm. um, are skills that they call like soft skills. Right, like things like uh, persistence and things like the ability to work with other people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, goal-oriented behavior, and they call those like soft skills. Um, but I think those are the hardest skills. Those are the things that you yeah. are difficult to develop, and those are the ones that transfer the best to whatever you end up doing in your life. And I think in Definitely. this world, you know, in the world we live in today, you know, kids that are in high school, middle school now, the job that they are training for may not exist yet. Yeah, you know, and I stole that phrase. I didn't make. But anyway, but I, I feel like, um, and you know, it's, there, there's a lot of really, really good technical programs, um, and they're very well supported. And, and so at Hickson, for example, we had some fantastic uh, career and technical education programs. And I think that's, that's awesome, and mm -hmm. I have a lot of respect for those programs, and I wish, I, I wish people would see the value in what we do in the fine arts on par with that. Yeah. Because, you know, some kids uh, are like ag kids and that, that's where they're going to go and like that's where it's going to take right? them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Hickson didn't have an ag program at all when you were there, I don't think. But uh, uh, They started building it up when I was there. And did they start it? Okay. But they didn't get the big greenhouses until after I left, I think. They're up to, they have three teachers in the ag department. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I mean, that's awesome. It's blown up and it's yeah. a fantastic program. And I feel like if there was that same level of support for the arts, mm -hmm. you'd see results that yeah. are matching things like that because those kids are doing some phenomenal stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and it always seems like the arts are kind of the afterthought because people can't quantify what the value is. Yeah. You know, and I, I think the danger is if you can't put a number or a price tag on it, uh, people don't value it. Yeah. And I that think, that's the big change. Yeah. I, I think that's something I noticed too um, when I was learning more about, um, you know, the administration side of public schools and, you know, how fine arts teachers actually, you know, work in a school was that... Um, 
you know, I think sometimes, not all the times, but sometimes administrations can be a little out of touch with what um, band directors are actually doing and what fine arts teachers are actually doing. And that, like, like you said, it's not really quantifiable. You can't really put a number on, you know, you can't really measure, you know, how, you know, how good at someone is at being a leader after they've done marching band and was, you know, drum sure. major for two years. You know, you can't really quantify that. You can't really quantify how good at someone is when they're, you know, how good at someone is with like working with other people because they worked with other people and, you know, concert band. I mean, that's yeah, the whole what, thing. Yeah, what is, scale do you measure that on? Yeah, exactly. It's not really a way to measure that. And that's what our public schools, you know, try to do a lot is get measurements, get mm -hmm. results so they can have data, so they can understand, you know, what they're doing and, you know, make sure they're doing things right, which I think makes sense. You know, we should be measuring, you know, how well our students are learning, but it is hard to. I think another, yeah, another way to put it would be that we in music education um, probably need better resources and skills to make what we do uh, make sense yeah. to people as they're looking at the data. Yeah. Uh, and it's just, it's harder to do. And it mm -hmm. takes more time and it takes more focus. So I, I know there's a lot of people that are doing research out there into how to quantify things. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a good thing to do, but ultimately I think people just have to see the product. Mm hmm definitely so, so come to, to concert <laughs> yeah go to concerts always watch. yeah for real you can oh, see amazing the music there <laughs> that's okay it's okay but um let's let's move on here so what do you think public schools have gotten right when it comes to dealing with um fine arts education uh well i think it varies from school to school but i yeah. think uh my best experiences have been when i was able to make a connection with admin and with uh, you know the people that make decisions mm -hmm. and you know, they could see the value in what we do. Um, and then just about every time that's turned into, you know, supporting the arts better. Yeah. Um, so I think really just the fact that they allow, um, this could be a two-edged sword, but the fact that they allow admin to kind of make decisions about how to run their school. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're able to just make those kind of relationships within the building, um, that usually is better. So kind of like more partnership with, I guess the band directors and, or the fine arts teachers and, you know, the administration. Yeah, it's really kind of up to us to, to, you know, build the relationships and to, you know, yeah. build a relationship with the community. Um, so I think anytime you can, you know, connect the public school with the community more, you yeah. know, and get community support uh, and just find out what the community needs, you know, like, do you need marching band for the Christmas parade? Well, let's, let's talk about that, you know, yeah. do you need, you know, we used to do the Christmas tree lighting and everything. Mm -hmm, I remember that. Uh, you know, at Hickson. Uh, right across the street so mm -hmm. you know it's just you gotta you gotta build relationships yeah. and then so anytime they do things to build better relationships with the community I think they've had some success with the arts that makes sense so what made you decide to move to McMinn County High School uh, well let me tell you about just the opportunities that are up there because mm -hmm. uh, it's a really really cool situation so uh, they have a tradition of having a really good band program of course I've mm -hmm. seen their band for years uh, I've known like most of the recent band directors there. Um, it's a smaller county, but a bigger school. Mm -hmm. And the way they've got it set up, I'm going to be teaching band all day. <clears throat> so I start in the morning with beginning band at uh, some of the feeder schools. Um, so I'm going to travel around to like a couple of different schools that feed into the high school. Wow. Um, so I'll be teaching sixth, seventh, eighth grade band. And then I go in the afternoon and I teach two classes at the high school. We have a United Sound. Uh, which I haven't even got started yet, but Sounds it's fantastic. Fancy. United Sound is a very cool program, yeah. uh, you know, and like that's a whole other interview right there. <laughs> um, but I and I'm just scratching the surface of what it, it allows uh, you to do. But basically, well, look up United Sound; it's fantastic. United it's Sound, okay, I'll look up. Uh, anyway, and it's just it's it's peer leadership and it's uh, getting different uh, parts of the school uh, population to you know get involved in band that wouldn't normally get involved in it. Okay. Um, so it's really, really cool. And I've had a lot of friends that have done some great stuff. So that, that, they've already got that program going. So mm -hmm. we're going to continue that. And then we'll have uh, just regular band class. Yeah. Um, you know, I have uh, actually, there are two band directors working together at high school. So we, we team teach, oh, which has cool. been a whole new thing. Wow, yeah. Uh, so there's a band director and assistant band director. And uh, the assistant actually will go to other feeder schools. And then there's actually a city wow. school that feeds into it too. So I've actually got, we got three band directors to do the entire program, six through 12, all work together. And, uh, you know, some really great people, Sebastian Lozano, who you know from UTC. Hey, I Sebastian mentioned. Lozano, shout uh, out. Hey, <laughs> shout out, Sebastian. We got a theme going on. <laughs> For cool. real, we're gonna shout uh, out. Anyway, he's, he's the assistant band director at McMahon, so we're working together now. 
Uh, oh, wow. He just got hired a couple weeks ago. So, uh, That's awesome. I'm going to congratulate yeah. him. Right? Um, anyway, and it's, it's going to be a really, really cool thing. I've already really enjoyed working with him. And then uh, mm -hmm. the, the previous band director of the high school is now going to be at the city middle school feeding into the program. And she's a fantastic wow. teacher, Abby Hedrick. So uh, anyway, just great a really good opportunity yeah. to do a lot of good stuff. And what I really love about it is I'm going to be teaching band from you know, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. and then mm -hmm. beyond. So I really feel like it's an opportunity to just really see how far I can go with just yeah. you know, growing as a band teacher. You yeah, know? I think that's a great opportunity for you. That oh, it definitely amazing. Is. And it's, it's one that I felt like, you know, I love Hickson. I'm gonna miss those people I already do. Of course, um, of course. You know, I was there for a long time, but mm -hmm. uh, I just couldn't pass it up. Yeah, you know? definitely. No, it's totally understandable. I think that's great. I mean, the amount of resources that they have United Sound. That sounds amazing. I'd love to look that up and learn more about it. But just the fact that y'all have three band directors, that's, that's awesome. There's two at the high school. Of course, we don't work directly with the uh, city middle school, yeah. but her kids feed directly into the high school, too. So yeah. just a really, really good setup. Yeah. No, and they have an auditorium. <laughs> just throwing that out. There you go. Yeah, that sounds great. I'm really, really happy for you to, Thanks. to be able to move on. All right, let's move on here. So... What are some memories that have stuck with you from teaching music? I guess let's let's just stick with Hickson for now. Okay, um, it's good memories from Hickson, I guess. There's a lot, of, you know, like there's, of course, the good and the bad is what sticks with you, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so yeah, one of, of my favorite thing that's kind of both. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, gosh, when was it? It was 2019 fall, I guess. It was marching band? Mm -hmm. Not last year. I think it was the year before. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, it seemed to thunderstorm on Friday nights every week in the fall. Oh, of course. And, and uh, Friday nights is when you guys have the you know, football games in yeah, high school. Yeah, so every football game, thunderstorm. Yeah. So it was like our third thunderstorm. I think it might have been actually Friday the 13th. Um, oh, even better, even better. Because uh, we were talking about this last year, me and the kids. But uh, the, there was a, some sort of electrical problem right as we were on the field, and all of the home side stadium lights went out. Ooh, dramatic effect. Right. You know? <laughs> the, the back, the, the visitor side lights were out. Home side lights were completely out. It's dark. We're out on the field right in the middle of the show. Oh and the kids kept playing, <laughs> which was great. Because they're, you know, they're trained. Props, they're, props they're pros. to them. Don't stop. Even if there's a tornado forming above your head. Like oh, they did great. There, there was no tornado. If that had happened, we'd have <laughs> no. been gone. Actually, no. We have rules, you know. We have rules. <laughs> but no, they kept going. That was an electrical problem. Um, we thought maybe there was lightning, but there wasn't any. Mm -hmm. And then um, suddenly, as we were playing, we were playing. Uh, it was a Journey song. It was Open Arms. Oh, Journey. We were doing an cool. '80s thing. And then, as we we're playing, uh, you know, real pretty song. Everybody in the audience like gets out their cell phone, turns on the lights, and starts like doing this whole thing. No. It was way. magic. And wow. the kids will. And it was kind. Of, it was bad. It was like we don't know what to do. But at the same time, it turned into this really neat moment that everybody's going to yeah. remember forever. Yeah. I think. And that's one. I mean, you know, we could here for an hour talking about stuff but that's, yeah, that's one recent that I just I think is always I'm always gonna remember that yeah I think that's a that's a great memory but um wow man it's such a magical moment to just evolve out of something that's just slowly devolving I guess just getting it's, worse yeah and of course you know then they had to cruise all that week like replacing the lights and everything <laughs> I was like look I, I don't think we can repeat that guys <laughs> you know you can't top that so I would be interested to know what it what, what sticks out to you about high school band in particular oh man there was one moment i i can't remember if it was at a competition no it probably wasn't a competition it was definitely a game it was a football was game band. yeah it was uh it was a high school you know football game we were in the marching band and um i don't know i guess it was after the game but we all we weren't really like storming the field but we were all just kind of like moving around like packing up and then somehow we ended up on the field as like a group and the other band was with us too. And oh, I think maybe the, both the bands just got together and we were like talking or something and getting to know each other. But um, I don't know if I started it or someone else started it, but I started playing a bass line because I played tuba. And then someone from the other band just started playing on top. And then a bunch of people just started playing together. And oh, we were just. What was that? I remember that. It was just this crazy, like, just pop up improv session with a bunch of high, bunch of high schoolers. And that was just probably one of the most fun, just impromptu moments no you know, that's what i always loved about you guys at hickson is that and year after year you mm -hmm. know over the course of a long time you guys were always all about going to see the people in the other band mm -hmm. and like, like can we meet the other band can we go hang out with them can we talk to them and yeah. i thought that was a really cool thing to you know different schools and we just all have that in common mm -hmm. well we had a couple of pretty outgoing people shout out to robert and randy oh my god <laughs> i know you remember them i know uh, yes i do <laughs> 
Yeah, your class was interesting. <laughs> we were a mixed bag, I guess. But um, shout out to them. They were outgoing. I feel like they pushed us, to, you know, to to meet. That was people. that was a very good thing. That you but um, you know, it's a balance. Anyways, I, I think that's a I think that's a good stopping point. Thank you so much for uh, for talking with me. It was Absolutely. Good. It's you been know, my pleasure hearing all this stuff about you and great memories too. Wow, got to relive a lot of memories through this interview. So yeah. So thank you. Well, it's been my pleasure. Thank you so much. Been mm -hmm. an honor. Thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next time. Amplify is a podcast network made up of people of color and operating out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Amplify is a project of Rise Chattanooga, a minority-based cultural arts nonprofit organization focused on community education, performance, and arts and cultural preservation. You can find all of the podcasts on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and risecha.org. Thank you so much for listening.